Uh, I'm Bob Butler. I live at Tucson Drive in Portland. Not that anybody cares, but uh, I'm used to saying that during conversations like this. Um, I noticed some bravery here that uh, is a little bit of a surprise, a pleasant surprise, the fact that this committee is even meeting, uh, the fact that you are kind of on the firing line right now and also given a rather huge task, uh, maybe an impossible task by Roger's comment, but productive. I want to thank you for those things. Um, but I think I have something to say. It has to do with the bravery of saying that there is a culture. I happen to agree with that. I think it's a cancerous culture, quite frankly. It's been a trimet for a long time. It's not just a trimet, though. Uh, if I get through much of this material, part of the problem is the city of Portland as well. And that, that was kind of surprising as I talked to operators, rail and bus drivers, what the real problems are. But <clears throat> the biggest problem is that something caused this cancer. That's the biggest problem. How did it happen? There's an obstacle to the solution of this problem, perhaps, and that's the fact that we're prejudging something or judging something. Well, not we, because it's certainly not me. But I hear comments like, <clears throat> TriMet has the best mass transportation system in the United States. You know, if you have that attitude in Toronto, it, it really is an obstruction of progress. If you have the wrong impression of what you really are, that's another problem. Not facing up to the cause of the problem and not admitting something that is realistic. The other comment I heard here was that, quote, we have the talent. We have what? The talent. I haven't seen it. I mean, I think we have a huge safety problem. I don't see any talent. I know some of these people. No, there is talent. I haven't seen any here. And yet you say that. So, <clears throat> yeah, I challenge you, my second challenge, Show me the talent. Show me the record of these safety employees, how, how they can be called professional, trained, experienced. I dare you. I don't think we have the talent. We haven't been interested, or we would. It's out there. God, is it out there. Easy to secure. So the last time I was here, I made you a challenge, didn't I? I said, I am the, <laughs> probably putting you asleep, I'm sorry. No. I, am, I am the weirdest citizen in Portland who has tried harder than any other citizen to solve a rather simple safety problem that has a solution. And I said, I dare you to find someone that has tried harder than I have. And the challenge was, I dare you even to find out what that was about. If, there, if you can even dig up that record. And the offer was, well, come on back, Mr. Butler, and we'll be glad to have that happen. Uh, boy, we've been quiet on that subject, haven't we? Okay. So, I didn't, you see question? It. I didn't can I see it. Can I ask you a question? I didn't even see it on the agenda. Yes, Roger, sir. please ask. Uh, Just so it doesn't kind of get me on I think it's important that we understand your definition of a cancerous culture. What do you mean? What, is it, what does that mean to you? Can I answer that last? Sure. I won't forget it. And I, I hope it's a good answer, you know, a constructive answer. But I will. It's good. I mean, it's a, it's a hell of a thing that for a citizen to say. You better be able to back it up. 
Robert, as to your point in the challenge you gave us, and I want to say it was two months ago, and I asked the staff specifically to follow up on that. I'm not sure if they've gotten back to you. I got a report uh, that they've looked through every record they have and cannot find the specific complaint uh, uh, that you've lodged with us. That's true. So I, I, I did get that. Thank you, Tom. Did, did you I, I was told that I was right. You, you wouldn't, this world-class system would be unable to find that. So I will accept the fact that it's not a world-class system. You have I lodged a thoughtful concern uh, since we haven't been able to find it, since the staff hasn't been able to find it for us. What I would ask you to do is <coughs> tell us what it is so that we can then uh, okay. ask the staff thoughtfully to address it. You can do if, that either tonight or you can send it. I'll, I'll, I'll do it tonight if you let me finish my presentation tonight and you can ask that as a question. Okay. Is it fair enough? Sure. And believe me, I came prepared to answer it. Thank you. Um, well, the last meeting I thought was pivotal, uh, and I was pleased to see that I shouldn't quit saying me, but two of you uh, noticed her comment about the futility of an operator trying to solve a safety problem like mine, futility. And Roger's good question, or my, Tom's good question, two of you said, that's a problem. I wish you'd all said that, but maybe it's not that big of a problem. I think it's absolutely huge. I think that's part of the cancerous culture. A culture that ignores the attempts of its employees to improve safety. I think that's a cancer. I think it's very regrettable. Um, I did talk to, uh, well, the surprising thing, the other surprising thing was the consultant. He came out and he said some things that weren't in his report. Uh, he put a little bit of uh, you know, emphasis on things like we don't have anywhere near enough staff. Even if they were qualified staff, we still are half of what we ought to be. Hmm. That was pretty interesting. We also know that we don't have enough security, don't we, from the Homeland Security study, telling us we don't have enough security on our mass transit to protect the public. Hmm. Cancer, too bad. Um, so after I left the meeting, and I'll get to your question, I said this, we're just looking at the top of this iceberg. So I went out and approached a supervisor, a line supervisor of Max. We had a very interesting talk for about 15 minutes. I pointed out to her, three or four, what I consider serious safety hazards. And those hazards have to do with the facilities. The facilities. We rarely have talked about the facilities, have we? Here I do with the facilities. She said, you're right. Uh, that's the city of Portland problem. Call them up. You're right. That's the city of Portland. Call them up. Uh, that is a real safety problem. I agree with the solution. Call 238-RIDE. 238-RIDE. This was a very frustrated person with yellow cards, by the way. So I said, when you're, I said, can I ask you candidly? Am I wasting any time? Uh, can I ask you candidly? Do you think that you really did your job in helping this citizen's concern about safety? Yeah. But she was, there was a problem that night on the rail, so she was a little bit tense. And I said, uh, do you think you should have offered to fill out a safety card? Yellow card, yellow card. I said yellow card. She said, oh, you mean the customer complaint? 
No, ma'am, sir, whatever the case. A safety yellow card. No, I won't fill one out. I said, why? It's a complete waste of my time. Our time is much better spent, sir, if you call up TriMet 238 Ride and try and get it solved that way, because they will not listen to me. So I said, uh, do you mind if I quote you? She said, you can quote me. It's documented. I didn't tell you the name. I'm not going to do it here. I, I might ask, her one, ask the person one more time if that's okay, and then I may not quote anyway. So that was within 30 minutes of leaving this meeting. I learned that. The next person was a rail rider. What's wrong? Is there any safety issues at TriMet? Huge. Really? Are you curious? Uh, the T4 trains. They're unsafe. It's a new design. They have safety flaws in the design. You can't see. It's worse visibility than the, than the trains we had. We have braking problems. We have the mirrors don't work. It was supposed to work. We're better off without the mirrors. I haven't heard anything much about vision from a T4 car. How many do we have? 25? 50? Oh, we said uh, the new new transit mall. Fifth and sixth. Dangerous. That design is dangerous. Well, I said I had to agree with that too. It's very confusing for auto. I don't know what it's like for a train, but it's very confusing. City of Portland. Oh, I haven't heard anything about them all from anybody here. We have discussed that a number of times. I've been here a number of times. I'll look at the record and apologize later. So, uh, I haven't heard any solutions about them all either. So, our, our, I'm not already done. done. You had a little midterm exam, Tom. That was more bravery. What have you learned so far? Two of you talked about yellows. What have you learned so far? What you do? Trying that operators ran out of ideas. But we respect you. But you had nothing on the table in the way of an idea that I saw from Mr. Butler or Shirley Carter, who's my hero because of what you did last time. Um, so, we have, Roger said that we have, he's a genius. <laughs> no, he's good though. Roger says, you know, how can we as a committee comment? We had consultants. We had a, that consultants report said the number one problem, the most significant problem was what? The most significant problem. The others were minor. That's what you pay for. That answer, right? I'll help you. It was number one. Number one. The most significant problem is the reliability, I'm going to add a little bit, the reliability of management to communicate information to the line operators. Read your report. 